Okay, let's talk about trading on margin because ultimately this is one of the big reasons why we trade CFDs uh, rather than stocks. Um, obviously, there's a stamp duty issue if we're buying shares, which we don't have with CFDs. But the big thing is that we can buy exactly what we want without having to put up the large amount of money, which means that as traders, we can benefit from these short term moves um, without having to go and put massive amounts of money in our brokerage account. So it's ultimately a loan from our broker. Our broker says, you know what, you only have to put up a small amount, I will put up the rest for you. Do not worry. It's, which is very, very useful. It means we can control a large amount of capital uh, with not much I put it down but it's also very dangerous because with that large amount of capital we have a potential problem because we are you know controlling a decent amount but we don't actually own that amount okay we may own that separately but we don't actually have that in our account to cover it a lot of times so we've got to be very careful now margin varies from instrument to instrument you know we kind of talked a little bit about how currency margin is a lot lower than for example a share margin just based on the potential volatility and what uh, is expected to move from it and you know it can be a raised or lower by the broker to protect their their business and of course their clients they don't want you to lose money uh, and you know they don't want to lose money themselves so um, they will raise or lower it uh, accordingly now why will they raise and lower it though they may raise and lower it depending on Let's say, for example, they've got you've got earnings on a stock which could could gap quite aggressively. They will uh, raise the margin on that, thinking we don't want people to be caught out by the uh, change in um, in valuation of this stock. And there may be some kind of incident coming at the week, over at the weekend, which of course you can't trade currencies. So, for example, uh, the euro may well have an increased margin over the weekend because uh, there's a vote coming out uh, for. A, specifically a specific European country that's got an election and you know a swing the other way is going to cause some volatility or, or one thing or another so that's going to cause the broker to kind of send out an email or whatever or a note on the platform that says hey listen you know if you're trading this you're gonna to have to put up more money over the weekend because um, you know there's a bit more risk to the portfolio there's gonna be a bit more risk to people trading this so we're gonna need a bit more money as deposit from you uh, so uh, and that's a good thing, right? You sometimes you think, oh, I don't want that. I want to be, you know, kind of a much margin. You don't really want that because number one, you don't want to be over leveraging yourself so that you know the slightest little move is going to take you out of your trade and going to hurt you. Um, but you also don't want to be. Um, you don't want the broker to go bust. You don't want the broker being ultimately exposed by massive moves that people have got, you know, over leveraged on. So it, it's a kind of you know, it's a happy medium. You've got to you've got to be comfortable for being able to control some size and to control some um, dispositions. But then at the same time, um, there's got to be a bit of risk management in there as well. So the reminder: if the notional value of the instrument is is a hundred thousand and the margin requirement is one percent, then the margin required is a thousand pounds. But you know what actually happens as the trade moves in a direction or another. So what we got is we've got two types of margin we've got initial margin and then variation margin now initial margin is the re margin required to open the trade and we just talked about that if it's a hundred thousand one percent you've got to put a thousand pounds up so but the variation margin or the maintenance margin depending on what you call it sort of a us uk terminology is the additional requirements that you need to put up if the trade moves against you so for example you're long 10 contracts of the FTSE at 6,020 and that's got a notional value of 60,200 pounds and an initial maintenance margin requirement of, of 602 which is a 1%. Now let's say the FTSE moves lower to 5,900 now your position is valued at 59,000 okay you're gonna have you'll be required to have that additional 1,200 pounds in variation margin to cover you know this adverse move. Now it's gonna they're gonna you're gonna you're gonna have a mark to market there which we'll talk about in a second which is going to revalue your position but you need to be able to fund this kind of position based on you know what you've got in your account and they're going to be revaluing it daily they're going to be looking at it to see exactly um you know 
what they need to cover their own risk you know what they need to make sure you don't get wiped out um and so you know it's it's important to understand that that things change as the as the market moves or as the under, under underlying moves and if we have a little quick look at the same example here but we're long but the market goes up in our favor then we're going to be credited with the difference so let's say the market now moves up to 60 6,100 and the position is now valued 61,000 we're going to be credited with that 800 pounds difference in value at the end of the day um, which obviously is different from a stock because we don't get that we don't get that until we close the stock position so this is like the, one of the extra advantages of CFD reducing our total margin requirement depending how you want to look at it obviously that's credit in our account but we're still going to require you know margin to manage the position and we can use these funds then to kind of add more to the position or to you know buy something else with they become our funds because the mark to market is revaluing the, the position at a certain point so that's one of the advantages now obviously if we go too crazy here and we start you know every time the market moves in our favor we're using it as margin uh we're going to potentially be caught out aren't we because you know when the market moves against us then we're not going to have the funds there to cover all the positions so got to be careful with it but again check how your own personal broker operates it but you know there's it's a little bit of complexity there to understanding initial margin and variation margin depending on how it moves and each broker is kind of different the way they the way they uh, process that and the way they um the way they, they'll calculate that but just understanding that it's not a case of well i've put my margin up now i can forget about it no no as the price moves back and forth it's going to affect the valuation of the cash you've got in your account and the margin required for that position or for all your positions